What do you got? What I've got for you are some of the most absolutely <laughs> expensive and collectible magic cards of all time. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at cards from Magic's inaugural set, Alpha, uh, also then followed by Beta and Unlimited. Now, after these sets came out in 1993 and 1994, some of the cards from this set were never printed again, ever. <laughs> Okay. Today, I just want to show you some of these cards because you tell me you've never seen them. I've not. I only know, what is it? White Lotus? Black Lotus? That's uh, it. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> so one of the things about Alpha Beta Unlimited is it does contain the Power 9. The Power 9 are considered the best magic cards of all time. I'm going to be showing you the Power 9, but I'm also going to be showing you cards that are not quite Power 9 and are just oddly worded strange cards. For each card, you're going to tell me if you believe this is a power nine card. And for each card, we're going to kind of try to figure out what it does if it's actually, you know, like old school good. And you're going to try to figure out the price. We're going to talk about the price of some of these absolutely ancient artifacts of their time. Sound like fun? Yeah, yeah. One, one question, one question. Yeah. Does, did, does, did magic play like it does now? It's just less... <laughs> Like, does that make sense though? Like they use lands and stuff? Yes, lands were okay. very much a thing. For the most part, impressively, the rule set of magic has stayed very intact, which is kind of incredible. Uh, I also want to quickly shout out uh, Resleevables podcast, which is one of my favorite uh, podcasts about old school magic, where I got uh, like a bunch of just facts and little tidbits about the set. So if you enjoy some of the stories I might spout off, that's where some of this came from. We're going to we're gonna start off on, we're just going to set the pace because I, I have a feeling you know this one seen this one everybody knows this one and we're gonna okay. try we're gonna have you guess the Dude, price first and foremost reading this card is horrific yeah like, let's go i hate that i hate that the text is like not white or like clear at all you have to squint your eyes to read black lotus oh my god how do you even read this That's, this is yeah, zero man. zero mana all right uh, this is an artifact adds three mana of any single color of your choice to your mana pool that is discarded tapping this artifact can be played as an interrupt what the hell is an interrupt <laughs> an interrupt great question an interrupt is a card type that no longer exists back in the original conception the idea is that it when it activates nothing can interfere with this you get the mana oh okay okay uh so i do know and i told you i told you this before this this is the only magic card i am aware of like from the the older days because it is the most expensive card or at least it was before the one ring was sold to post malone if i'm correct mm -hmm. okay uh so we'll start off with uh how good this card actually is i would assume because it was uh so expensive and i just know from like this is maybe metagaming a little bit but i know that a more expensive card usually means that it's really good but the thing about these cards is that because they were printed so like there's so many few copies of it the price is hiked up quite a bit because it's now a collect um, but the card seems pretty good, right? It's it's like zero mana to get three mana. Isn't that insane? It's, I mean, is mana cheating good? This is what mana you say in every video, right? <laughs> mana cheating is good. So yeah, this is a Yu-Gi-Oh card. If I actually go, I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. Um, so this card's probably broken, or at least it was. It was for sure banned. Like, I, yeah. There's n there's no way this card was like around. Uh, what is it called? You said the the what is it? Fable Nine. I'm sorry for I messed that up already. Oh no, it's, it's cool. It's the Power Nine. It's not the called, Power Nine. It's not the Weak Nine. It's not. <laughs> Not the beta nine it's this was a power nine. die card this is a power nine card it uh, it absolutely a power nine card this is like before the one ring was a magic card this was the one ring to magic collectors okay so i, I don't know if you know this but i'm gonna ask it anyways mm -hmm. do you know how many copies were in circulation oh that's a great question like, do you, you don't have to give me a number, but was it less than like a thousand? I don't think it's less than a thousand. Across Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited, I think there's over a thousand. But okay. I think that may, like in Beta, it might be like in the hundreds. Yeah, probably less oh. than that. Well, yeah. So the thing is, is like, uh, usually as time passes, cards like this get destroyed, like mm -hmm. by accident or whatever. Yep. So the amount of copies that are actually available get lower and lower as time passes, which means each card is more and more valuable. Now, in terms of how much this card's worth, I do have some idea this is the only one I have an idea of because again this is like pretty iconic in just the card gaming sphere is I'm gonna just take a guess here and I guess we're gonna do American prices right yeah uh let's do 900 grand nine hundred thousand yeah. dollars are you high no <laughs> <laughs> all right well um 
I can get one of these uh, un from Unlimited. By the way, uh, for the rarity, Alpha came first. It's the lowest print run. Then Beta, that is the second lowest print run. And then Unlimited is a slightly, you know, like higher, but still very rare print run. You can tell an Unlimited card by a white border. Alpha has black and Beta has black. The uh, borders on Alpha are a little like rounder. You see, you can kind of yeah, see yeah. the border there. All right. So right now I can go get an Unlimited Black Lotus, heavily played, who knows, might be falling <laughs> apart for $10,220 on TCG player. But I know where that number comes from because <laughs> Post Malone bought a signed, and by the way, Christopher Rush has passed away, rest in peace. So signed is kind of a big deal as well. A signed mint Black Lotus. I, I don't think it was mint. Maybe it was like an eight like an 8.5 or something rated. Okay. He he spent 800, Post Malone spent $800,000 for that Black Lotus, <laughs> which at the time was the most expensive card transaction for a Magic card. 800,000. $800,000. $800, okay. That's, well, I mean, it's it's arguably the most iconic card for Magic, right? Yeah. Like it, this, this is yeah. the card. So this is the card. If you're Post Malone and you have that much money, hey. I mean, might as well. <laughs> hey. Also, if you're somebody who owned a Black Lotus before that transaction and then you saw it after, your price probably hiked up quite a bit because th that probably showed how much people are willing to pay for a card like this. Indeed. Um, so that's pretty cool. So, but in terms of what you can get for like, like a, an actual reasonable price, 10 grand for a heavily played one, that's pretty wild. Yep, pretty wild. 10 grand. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine I, people have to be careful at card stores because if somebody like wants to hold the lotus before they buy it you have to be like yeah they could just walk out of here and go get a car oh my god i would have three security people standing behind them if i'm gonna be letting them hold this card. yeah there have insane? to be bodyguards at the door right you have to yeah. sell it at a private transaction which is insane for a card game all right ready for card number two i am let's so excited to show you this card let's do it I, i'm actually really excited to see what they they look like because they look so weird man all right chaos orb two neutral mana this is another artifact you pay one mana to flip chaos orb onto the playing area from a height of at least one foot <laughs> what <laughs> Continue. Chaos Orb must turn completely over at least once or it's discarded with no effect. When Chaos Orb lands, any cards in play that it touches are destroyed. <laughs> Bro, this is, okay. I don't know if you've looked or have ever watched one of the Yu-Gi-Oh videos I did where they sh where the guy showed me insane Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but this is one of those cards. Oh like, yeah? This is, this is at, hold on. Hold on, hold on, just to give you some context here. Was this card played? Like, I don't know how many cards were printed in this set. Uh, like, do you have a number of the, the amount of cards that were printed in here? Of the like, total cards in the set. Um, yes. Yeah, so this, again, was the first set. So the card pool was super, like super limited. So playable right. had a whole different meaning. Ex 100%. Uh, just for context, for people who don't know, like from a Har like a Hearthstone's perspective, when the base set for Hearthstone released, there was like 300 and something yeah. cards. This is 295 cards. Okay. Uh, wow. All right. I feel like there's probably more, like there's probably better cards than this, but this is absolutely hysterical. And I would absolutely kill to see this card being played in real life, to be honest. I think this would be, this, this is a Hearthstone card too, bro. This is everything. In terms of good, probably not played. I'm just going to put it out there. I wouldn't be surprised if it was though, just because the card pool is so limited. In terms of price. If you like, we can, like, I can tell you if it was played and then we can talk price. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, I guess that helps. Is this good? What's interesting about this is in that first set, removal was so like awkward and strange that this was an artifact that could remove anything if you're good yeah. at it. So any deck could oh. have removal that could work <laughs> if you were good at it. And I think so. Full disclosure, I played Magic starting in 1994. So this like I never bought one of these off the shelf, but I was like there very early on. I played against plenty of people who had Chaos Orb in their deck and everybody I know from back then has a Chaos Orb story. All right, like there are so okay. many stories around this card. It's, it's incredible. It absolutely is to try to like flip this <laughs> and hit what you need to hit. Uh, but tournament play, like competitive play, no. 
no, it, it didn't. Uh, there okay. was nobody good enough at flipping Chaos Orb, I think, to make it a competitive <laughs> staple. So there's like, a, there's a little mini game mechanic that if you were really, really good at it, this would be the best card in the game. Like, yeah, theoretically. Sure. If you were the greatest card flipper to ever be known uh, before this. Of course, by the time tournaments were like real, this card got was banned in basically all the yeah, things. Yeah, probably a good call. Probably a good call. Yeah, because, yeah, it just added way too much weirdness to the tournament scene. Price-wise? Okay, so here's the thing. I feel like this one is actually still higher up because this one is so unique. And the thing about this effect is that this card would be damaged more often than other cards just because of what you would have to do with it. <laughs> So I, I'm just going to add that to what I think the price would be. Like, am I, oh, this way wrong, right? Like, Where in care if they actually different. used it? They might have actually ground it down is what you're saying. Well, they, they you get some rips, some scrapes, you know, it, it, things happen. Things happen. Magic's a crazy game, dude. People get a little angry. You never know. I'll get so limited just because we said 10 grand for the, the Lotus card. I'm going to go with like $3,000. $3,000? Yeah. $3,000. For an unlimited chaos orb? Yes. Uh, you can get it for a grand. 999 USD. That's still pretty insane, to be honest. I, 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 yeah. That card's awesome. $1,000 card's... is a lot of money. But uh, yeah, anybody watching this who has some magic cards in a storage locker or the back of their closet or the attic somewhere and thinks you have one of these, you might want to go uh, go get your, see if you have some. Sell it. Go get well, yourself so something here, nice. First and foremost, you didn't answer this question. Do you have a Black Lotus? Mm, do I? Do you have a Black Lotus? Would I say on the internet that I had a Black Lotus if I You're had right. one? Holy shit, that's a really cool yes, Black Lotus. Yes, I would. I would absolutely flex if I had one. I do not. I do not have a Black Lotus. All right. All right. Next card. Oh, my God. This looks so strange because the font's bigger. They didn't have like a... Oh, my God. What does what, what, what this card even read? Ancestral <laughs> Recall? That's what it says, right? This is what blue was, right? Oh, my God. It looks so strange. All right, one blue. Uh, I can't read the text under... Oh, that says instant, actually. Okay. Just squint uh, harder. Draw... <laughs> Draw three cards or force opponent to draw three cards. For one blue, this has to be nuts. I don't know why. I mean, even forcing your opponent to draw three cards is probably okay. But drawing three cards for one mana seems absolutely disgusting, especially in the blue class. Or the blue color, I should say. Uh, Absolutely nuts. Definitely saw tournament play. Probably a part of the powerful nine. You are correct. This is one of the... I, some would say this is the best magic card of all time. It's certainly my favorite. I love drawing cards. One mana for three is... Damn. Absolutely busted. Uh, so you, you, sorry, it's a part of the powerful nine, you said? Yep, it is uh, another one of the power nine, if you're keeping track at home. <laughs> I I owned one of these cards. Um, I This was one of the first, this was the first power nine card that I got for myself back in the day. And I sold it uh, to go to college and pay for college for a whopping uh, $220. So having dropped that, how much do you think this card is worth? Okay, based on what you just said, I feel like you're a little salty from it. <laughs> uh, so it can't be as much as the Lotus because I would have heard of this card. I think actually maybe I wouldn't have like, well, no, I'm going to go with like eight grand. I think eight grand is pretty safe. For it's the unlimited premium. one? For the unlimited one, yeah. I love how hard you're going. It's actually, uh, and and it's been in that uh, ballpark before. Right now, you can get a, we'll go with a moderately played price, uh, about $3,500. <sighs> oh my God. God. So for, I guess for me, because I don't know enough about older magic cards, like to be fair, I I, I personally have never bought in a physical card game or yep. card except for Lorcana, which literally just came out. So I don't know how much cards get like their prices raised depending on nostalgia or like collectability, whatever. 8,000 probably seems a lot, but if it's like just as, I don't know if this card would be considered better than Lotus. I guess I, it would be, right? I mean, if you wanted an alpha one, <laughs> if you, yeah, the alpha one here that is like, oh, god there don't even have many listings Sixteen thousand five hundred for the alpha oh god oh my. just for just for context do you know how much the lotus was going for before post malone bought it Ooh, i think that was part of an auction uh th th before that purchase before that purchase what was reported on the internet is the most expensive black lotus sale was five hundred and forty thousand. Ooh, oh god okay Okay, all right. I'm gonna start low, going a little lower, but holy fuck, that's insane. I mean, it's th these these numbers are crazy, right? For for piece of cardboard that's often like kind of banged <laughs> up, I, that came out of a booster pack. It's insane. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Lich. All right, this is four black. I can read enchantment. I like how it has a black background for the record. It's very nice. At least it makes it more readable. All right, you lose all life. Oh. <laughs> 
Good line. Okay. If you gain life later in the game, instead draw one card from your library for each life. I'm sorry. How do you? Okay. Do you? How do you play the game? If you. All right. I'm not gonna keep reading. For each point of damage you suffer, you must destroy one of your cards in play. Creatures destroyed in this way cannot be regenerated. What the hell does that mean? Good old like, regenerated used to be a mechanic that was on a number of mostly like green creatures and some black creatures that if they would die, you pay this cost and they don't die. Oh, that sounds really unhealthy. Uh, you lose if this enchantment is destroyed or if you suffer a point of damage without sending a card to the graveyard. Okay, so I was wondering from the very first sentence how you continue playing the game if you just lose all life, but this card is your life. Uh, it's like, uh, I understand, okay. Can you tell me how many cards actually destroyed enchantments in the base set or was there like enough? Uh, yeah, I can try to. Uh, I can think of at least two. <laughs> and there's of course Chaos Orb. Right. Right. Always have to consider Chaos Orb. I mean, this could be a really good effect. Uh, I obviously I have no idea what the base set of magic was like, but if you could support this card, definitely not the worst thing in the world. But you do need enough cards to send to the graveyard. No, it's probably pretty bad. This is a gimmick card. I think Chaos Orb is more playable than this. OK, Oh God. so not you don't think this is power nine? No. For the record, are you asking me like, yeah, for the record, I don't. You're think right. It's, it's not power. Oh, nine. thanks. It's fucking power God, nine. dude. Ah. <laughs> Uh, I'm holding up my copy of Lich to the camera right now. Uh, this is one of the ones I have. This is an unlimited Lich. And this card, fringe play at best, but you could okay. do really cool things with it. Like, if you have a Black Lotus, like, you could get this out on turn one before the opponent had anything to attack or damage you with. And then anytime you gain life, you're drawing cards. There were various ways to just gain a good amount of life that just kind of pop you off um now in the base set not so much but by the time there were like three or four expansions you could play this in combo decks and do cool things but it was certainly it was a spec it's an acquired taste you know <laughs> people who love it love it and it didn't see a lot of like competitive play from like a flavor standpoint like for as far as i know like this fits into the black class so well and it was probably one of the more defining cards of the class that helped design future cards oh it, it, yeah there's some so cards i hope i get to show you someday <laughs> in, kind of with some lich inspiration that that well they went on to make some history we'll put it that way okay yeah I, it's really really cool card uh in terms of price like because it wasn't very good and it was like kind of a more meme card i would assume it's lower so like maybe six hundred dollars so you can get an unlimited one right now for 145 which is actually like, I was Not surprised. Bad. That's why I scooped one up because I it was worth more in my head. Um, I, An alpha <laughs> one would be like 3000 is what I'm finding. Okay, I see, I see. Uh, well, okay, so I'm guessing you bought the card though because you assume the price is only gonna continually go up. Oh, I bought this it for me. Event. I oh, okay. like, I don't, so this is a whole other thing where I lose the MTG finance community's credibility, but I buy cards for myself to collect. I've had to sell my collection at three different times in my life because something bad happened oh my god the first time i sold out was to buy a car so i could have transportation at college like that was the reason and that's why i don't have an ancestral recall in my life oh yeah. I, actually it's just college don't go to college kids keep your yeah that was a big mistake in general to be honest I, theater major so look how that paid uh, off hey look you're using it now in your videos i it's, sure am i'm perfect. using it I'm using it so so much. It all comes full circle, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> it, it it always it always makes me like I, I, my brain doesn't process that the card text changes based on how much text is in the, actually in the box because it's it's standardized in literally every card game, right? But I guess there was no standardization beforehand. The all standard right, is, had yet to be invented. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I know this is force field, but it kind of looks like it says porous field. Am I wrong? <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Three neutral mana. This is another artifact. One mana, lose only one life to an unblocked creature. D um, This is probably part of the powerful line. That's an insane effect. I would instantly play this in almost every deck I could in Hearthstone because that's insane. Uh, Yeah, good card. <laughs> That's that's my analysis. This is in the power nine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's not. <laughs> it's not. What? What? <laughs> yeah. I got him. Dude, we got him. That? How is that not in the? That is an insane effect. You're right. It is. Um. So <laughs> this is where a little context is actually. Um. A little context goes a long way. Most of the creatures in the set suck. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. okay. And and games often came down to ways to like cast giant spells or do combo kills. Um, there are only a handful of like actually good creatures that you can hit your opponent a bunch of times with. And yeah, force field was kind of unnecessary to a lot of ways that the game was played in the beginning, which is so weird because people were still figuring out how to play the game. So a lot of people, most people did play with creatures, but everybody actually trying to figure out the game quickly realized creatures suck. They just oh. died to everything. They were terrible against effects like force field. And what you could like, hell? like in hindsight, you could be like, oh, well, if creatures suck, then maybe this should be in power nine because it's one of the cards that repressed creatures. But the creatures themselves had bad stats. They were terrible. Uh, it was all about these card draw effects. It was all about these combos. And it, like, if you're being competitive, competitive with it uh, just so i'm clear though like if this card was in the game right now like in standard you play this card oh 100 percent. this is a okay, great card okay. <laughs> this card is I nuts just, this card i is was insane. gonna say oh there's wow. one other thing that is very contextual about the format back then blowing up your opponent's lands was legitimate tactic oh if you had no mana to use your force field you couldn't use your force field true that's okay well, i got it man one of these days i actually just have to go back and look what these older cards look like yeah man i am baffled this card didn't see more play but if minions i guess you haven't shown me a minion yet or a creature sorry i have actually no idea what they like but dude, that's an insane card uh in terms of price i don't know like the last one was i would say like 800 no it'd be less let's go with like let's go like 150 150 Okay, we're, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. You can get an unlimited force field for about $380. This card is still, you're getting there. We're narrowing down the, we're narrowing down the range. You'll have this by the end. Uh, okay. Force field is still legal in commander. I haven't seen one on the battlefield, but people talk about it a lot because commander is a very creature centric format and you have 40 life, if you can imagine. Yeah, uh, this, I'm surprised. I guess it's, wait, it's not, it's not played often though, is what you said? That's, yeah. what? <laughs> Mm. Dude, this isn't that is, weird? This card seems very good. It's I'm very so surprised. good. Kind of mind blowing to me that it it's not better. But that last card was really simple, straightforward, easy to understand. Let's give you another one. Oh, I can't even read this thing. Camouflage. Okay, this is green. What is that? I guess that makes sense what it's doing. All right, this is an instant spell. You may rearrange your attacking creatures and place them face down, revealing which is which only after defense is chosen. That's kind of cool. If this results in impossible blocks, such as non-flying creatures blocking flying creatures, illegal blockers cannot block this turn. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Uh, there. Okay, hold on. I can't imagine this being that good. Well, okay. Now that you've given me the context of like creatures were bad, this there's no way this card was played, right? Uh, that being said, this is absolutely wild, man. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh, dude. The face down stuff. Is this? There's no way this is good. Is You're right. Oh You're right. There's no, okay. there's no okay. way this is good. Uh, <laughs> I, I opened these in the controversial Magic 30 edition. I opened one of these and we were doing a thing where we were doing a live gameplay and we cast a card called Booster Tutor that lets you open a pack and take a card out of it. And I took this card <laughs> and I played it in a game of Commander and we had no idea. Like we were just trying to figure out what to do with it. It's yeah, it's yeah, a one it's shot just... screw up combat effect. And it it's weird. so weird. Uh, really cool card. I will say the card you just said of opening a pack and picking a card from it, really cool. Uh, I would love to see that in other card games, to be honest, because that's that effect's awesome. Yeah, mid game, kind of an awesome way to do it. Yeah, that's a God. This card sucks ass. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. It is. But how much is it worth? Uh, okay. I would imagine that this card's not worth a ton. I'd go with like fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. You could get an alpha one for $98. It's only $6 <sighs> for an unlimited one. That's how bad it is. Okay. Right. Six, Damn it, man. Six I should have got. All right. I'm, I'm getting closer and closer as we get through each card. So this is fun. Well, you're right. I will get there. <laughs> I love how competitive you are about it because pricing is like <laughs> markets. MTG Finance is just a, such a weird uh, moving vehicle anyway. Like, I would say yeah. don't beat yourself up, but you will. And that's why this is funny. I know. I <laughs> 
listen, I'm just, I just want to be right for one. I don't know what it is. Time walk. One neutral, one blue. Take an extra turn after this one. Okay, broken. I don't even have to, I don't even have to discuss this. Broken. 100% for powerful die. Like, there's no way it's not. This card, just for context, like, this card is, you're paying two mana to get that two mana back, but you also get all of your additional mana, and you, you can attack again, and you can draw another card. Uh, That's what this card basically reads as. So, yeah, absolutely disgusting broken. If this card was in Hearthstone, it would be banned. Like, they, they would have to remove it from the game. They they made a, a version of this card. I think maybe I've showed it before. Uh, you got this reward from a quest, and that quest was disgusting. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't print this card actually into the game. So if you tell me this isn't a part of the Powerful Nine, you're lying. This is a part of the Powerful Nine. Final answer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course it is. Okay, <laughs> this okay, card okay. is insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It's pretty great. Okay, Power Nine, one of the most busted yeah. cards ever. We are in agreement. Black Lotus <laughs> sold like some perfect condition one for like... 500,000 to somebody not named Post Malone and 800,000 that did. Ancestral Recall, about 3,500. What do you think Time Walk sells for? God, the fact that you mentioned Lotus makes me think it's like pretty high up. 200 grand. <laughs> yes. I, I can go to TCG Player and get an unlimited version for... <laughs> $2,799. Oh. Just, just subtract two zeros yeah, and I'm yeah. right there. Yeah, just, you're just, you're just 200. We were bare, we were closing in. Where you went, you went off Listen, on this you, you card. baited me. You baited me. I'm going to be honest. You shouldn't have said anything. I would have said something so much lower. You know, there's no rules in these games we play. I know. You know, know. it's all about the mind games. It's, it's, it is. A, yeah, you're right. No, you're right. Black Lotus is the most by far extreme outlier outside of the one ring which we've talked about before the range that you see these like really powerful cards in like you know the 3500 range that is not weird like like that is the c like that is really really high for a magic card yeah. um so there are a few more that are going to play in those spaces but like if you say ten thousand over ten thousand <laughs> for another one i'm going to laugh at you okay all right that's all right. fine Time Vault, two neutral. Tap to gain an additional turn after the current, oh my God, after the current one. Time Vault doesn't untap normally during untap phase. To untap it, you must skip a turn. Time Vault begins tap. Oh, that's incredibly interesting. Wow, okay, so you would have to play this exactly on turn two, or turn, latest like turn, maybe turn four. But you play this on turn two, then you skip turn three. Because if creatures sucked, you probably had time. God, it's not nearly as good as the last card though. Because you'd rather just have the effect immediate. This card you have to be willing to skip. The longer the game goes, the worse this card ends up being if you like actually draw into it. Because you, you probably don't get the skip turns later in the game. God, this is so tough though, because maybe it was really good if like there was not a lot of lethality in the early game because that means on average if you just pull this card like it's so good later in the game it sets up a combo i'm gonna say it's not part of the powerful nine but it was probably an okay card like in the right circumstances like it, it was probably good it is not in the power nine it was okay in the initial set uh the interesting okay. thing about your analysis is that you're thinking of it very fair and the True. thing that you want to do with this is play a, like a myriad of cards that are legal now and exist now that say untap target artifact. So you just take infinite turns. I, listen, okay, this is the Hearthstone brain talking. Uh -huh. I, I didn't even consider untapping an artifact was now, a consideration. And, and to be fair, like in the initial set, they didn't have that card. What they had was a card called Animate Artifact, which is an enchantment right. that you put on artifact that turns it into a creature. And then you use a card called Instill Energy, which let you untap a creature once a turn. So you turn it into a creature, untap it, tap it for an extra turn, next turn, untap uh, it, tap it for an extra turn. Oh infinite turns. Okay, okay. So it was it was good in the right circumstances when the card allowed it. To oh, be good. yeah. Very sweet combo card. And as more cards got printed, this card got better and better because a lot of cards were created that untap artifacts directly. Just two card win the game combo. That's pretty cool. Uh, I would hate to play against it, but yeah, like that's yeah. that's pretty awesome. So how much do you think people uh, pay for it? Is it banned and it everything? Is, it is banned in Commander. If you guys want to see how messed up this card can be in Commander, Playing With Power on their channel did a, a video with no bans, and I feel like every game was, and it's turn <laughs> one, and here's a Time Vault combo, and it's over. <laughs> Let's go with like $400. $400? Yeah. You can get an unlimited time vault for $1,092. People like <laughs> extra turns, dude. 
actually makes me really happy that Hearthstone doesn't have a physical game because those prices would be fucked. <laughs> Here's one. Illusionary mask, too neutral. Very spooky, to be honest. Another artifact, X to tap. You could summon a creature face down so opponent doesn't know what it is. <laughs> The X cost can be any amount of mana, even zero. It serves to hide the true casting cost of the creature, which you still have to spend. As soon as a face down creature receives damage, deal damage, or is tapped, you must turn face up. So, okay, hold on. So I could be like, I, I tap zero mana to play a creature, but I still have to tap all of the mana to cast that creature? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm still reading it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played this card. If you the creature, somebody... that spell becomes as... Okay, they have... And uh, we talked about this on a video before. Errata, right? They, they've they rewritten most of these cards into the way it's actually supposed to work. And okay. there's a notes and rules information setting on Scryfall page for this that kind of goes on and on and on. Okay. <laughs> and it says, uh. it says, like, you may choose a creature <laughs> card in your hand whose mana cost could be paid by some amount of or all of the mana spent on X. <laughs> so it, the X has has to be like the cost of the creature or more like it has to be something that you could have paid to have this creature somehow okay so all right or so no, if some the creature... amount of i okay now i really don't understand see this is it's interesting because it's like if i'm spending zero mana to play a minion that's broken like that's yeah. just broken but the, the question is when do you actually pay the mana for it right when it flips over like do you flip it at the same I, uh, see, this when is you the... activate the mask you have to Oh wait, if you do, you may cast that card face down without paying its <laughs> mana cost, without paying its cost. <laughs> Dude, when they made this card, like the, the the designer walked up to the other one and was like, "Hey, like, do you know what this card does?" And he goes, "Nope." Okay, dude. And then they just shipped it. It, it needs its own FAQ. How do I write a card if I don't fully understand how it works? I don't know. I'm gonna go with the fact that it's legal and everything, and I've never seen it played, as it probably sucks. <laughs> like, why would they make a card like this? I don't I, understand. I don't understand. The thing I most want to know is what happens when you just pay zero. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, whatever. I'm sure someone in the comments will let me know and then I'll, I can understand it because yeah I, I don't whatever Amy you did a good job drawing this mask good job yep that, that, that that's, that's it, all yeah, I'm saying about this card you, guys it seriously if somebody out there knows what this card does and wants to just write me a okay say I have a creature in my hand and I pay zero with this what happens like how do I do it I, I don't understand this card is so it, weird it's, I've never I've never owned one it's so bizarre I, yeah I listen okay which makes me think that okay so this is not in the powerful line Mm -hmm. So, which makes me think this card is very, it's like, what, five bucks? Ten bucks? Is that your answer? That's my answer. Five, five or ten, somewhere on there. I think that this one is a unique case of, it's it's the guys who get it, get it, you know? Like, who the people who are so 500 <laughs> IQ, big brain, that they make this card work, that they're willing to fight over the couple left in existence. Because this, you can buy for $165. Oh my God. Like, I, get I don't I get, get it. it. I don't get it. I really don't it's, get it. Oh, what, this is actually a lot. Raging River. What a name. Uh, Two red. Is that what red looked like back in the day? It sure God, is. It looks pinkish. Oh, all right. When you attack, non-flying defending creatures must be divided as opponent wishes between the left and right sides of the river. You then choose on which side of the river to place each attacking creature and attacking creatures can only be blocked by flying creatures or those on the same side of the river. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Could I put all of my creatures on one of the sides, no matter what? Wait, Sh but this sure. is, is this insane? Cause like your opponent picks the blockers first. Like they have to decide and then you get to attack after. So then do you get to decide? So you're like, I'm going to combat opponent is, and this is an enchantment. So it's on the field for, you know, until it's removed. So every turn, uh, Holy so fuck. yep. You go to combat and the opponent is like, well, I'm going to put these two creatures over here and these three creatures over here. And now right. you get to choose which side to attack on. Yeah, but isn't that like broken for you? Yeah, because, well, I mean, okay. it depends. Half the creatures aren't blocking, <laughs> probably. So what's that mean uh, for you? This card's broken. Uh, Really good. I can't imagine this wouldn't be good. Like, especially if it stays on the board and you do this every single turn, that's actually insane. Um, So, well, hold on. You did tell me that creatures aren't great during the set but even if creatures are bad like this is still really good no it has to be good why wouldn't it be good no it's good no it's good 
No, it's not. It's I, I'm talking myself out of it, but it's really good. No, this is a strong card. Uh, powerful nine. Like I could definitely see this being the powerful nine. Absolutely. I think it's so it, it's so stupid that your opponent has to pick blockers first. This is probably powerful nine. Raging River yeah. and the power nine. Yeah. You sound like I'm stupid when you say it like that, but it seems like it's so insane. This is not in the power nine, dude. What? <laughs> no way. No way. I'm envisioning it. Okay. I'm just thinking of it as let's say you have four minions uh -huh. okay, or creatures. Sorry. And then your opponent like has let over two. They have to go one, one. And then you stack all of your minions on the other side of the board so that you have three free attackers. Isn't that insane? Like if I out of my mind, I mean, I imagine that in a format where creature combat mattered and you know, it was all about creatures that raging river would be very good. It is legal in commander. I've never seen it in play, which is wow. kind of wild. How good it is 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 very like read the card this is not one even after all my years i've actually played against so i can't be positive i i see what you mean i see what you mean okay no you're right i'm gonna say 1500 1500 thank yeah. god you love this card oh I, okay, can I, I think you know you're kind of inspiring me to like get a raging river and play <laughs> it just to like report just, back to you i don't know man it seems like if your opponent is not like let, okay especially because you're telling me that no one plays this fucking card okay 2024 you buy this card you bring it to commander whatever you whip this card out your opponent is not prepared for this you absolutely roll them because they just can't <laughs> deal with the river like <laughs> I can see it being so good because of the surprise factor. You ever lose a game to a card and you're like, wow, I can't believe I lost that, but I don't feel bad about it because my opponent put that card in their deck. This is the same idea, but I, I'll have to give it a try. I mean, you are also, okay. So this is an, this is an interesting discussion. A little side tangent here. Yeah. Uh, I remember talking to one of the devs for Hearthstone and they said to me that if they re-released an expansion, like let's just say we went back in time, they re-released an expansion that they out. The metagame can be completely different mm -hmm. depending on what people discover and how they discovered it, right? What if we're just in the wrong timeline? Yeah. And right. <laughs> yeah. What if they never figured out Raging River? What I've, if all these Moxes, Lotus, extra turns? <laughs> oh my God. Imagine extra turns with a Raging River. Dude, I'm telling you. Okay, listen, I'm hyped up. I'm going to go buy one. I'm not even playing the game. $220 is what it'll cost you. Fuck. It should be $1,500. $1,500. It's just waiting for that pop. People will discover it soon. Uh, Mox Sapphire, zero new, oh my God, zero mana. Add one blue mana to your mana pool. Tapping this artifact can be played as an interrupt. Let me just want to understand this. Once the artifact is tapped, it doesn't untap, right? Oh, you don't even have to tap this. Hold on. You play this, you add one blue mana to your pool. But then what does tapping this artifact do? Does that give you another blue mana? You are asking wonderful questions. In the original <laughs> printing for, uh, Alpha Beta Unlimited. There were two kinds of artifacts. Now there's only one. So you'll never see the line mono artifact in a modern magic right. card. A mono artifact has to be tapped to use its ability. But then it untaps at the start of your turn, right? Correct. So, so this, is just this was before the tap symbol was created and all the other cards, like modern cards you've seen that have abilities, have a little symbol that implies that you tap the card to use it. Yeah. That hadn't been invented yet. I see. But that was uh, well, what you do. Now that you say that, this card is mana cheating in a sense. Uh, absolutely nuts. Powerful nine. Powerful nine? I mean, it's literally zero mana, get a mana every third. This card is in the power nine. Okay. okay. You are absolutely okay. right. Okay. I am holding one in my hand right Let's now. Let's go. This is, uh, <laughs> this is probably the most expensive card I own. And I just got it. Okay. Uh, I just got it a few days ago as a Christmas present to moi for a really awesome magic year. So... Yay. Wow, that's, I always that's... wanted one and I never had one before. I'm gonna brace you on this because I'm, I'm rooting for you at this point. I want you to get one of these prices. You know, I want you to nail okay. it. I'm gonna remind you of some things and I'm not just trying to mess with you. Okay. Black Lotus, super outlier, but the takeaway, right. people really like their little artifact trinkets that make mana, right? Okay. Extra turns, card draw, similar range. So we kind right. of have that in mind. Where does okay. Mox Sapphire fall? There are any, none of the other Power 9 cards we've identified thus far are colored. Blue is the only color represented in the Power 9 so far. All right. Holy shit. No wonder you like blue so much. Now, um... open your heart, open your mind, and give me your best guess on an unlimited Mox Sapphire. Mm, no, nine grand. Nine grand. Nine grand. Uh, man, I really want to... Like, I want to give you that because they were that, like, like just a few Fuck. years ago. 
Uh, five thousand <laughs> is the current price. Five thousand. <laughs> what caused the prices to go down? Yeah, I think it like the co I think people were just extra online shopping during COVID or something because all those prices went up. <laughs> there was that collectible boom, and I think that like a lot of the really high end stuff is recovering from that. Uh, to be I honest, see. but uh, Mox, I'm, I'm going to also now reveal uh, that five of the power nine are these Moxes. So I'm, I'm just going to do all the Moxes together here. And if okay. you wanted to for fun, we could guess the price, but these are all power nine. I'm not going to make you evaluate each one and be like, oh yeah, that's definitely power nine. Oh, so they, they just add specific mana. Yep. They're Either. basically a land, but it's an artifact. So it's zero. So you can play your one land and you can play your artifact the same turn and you're just ahead yes, on it's mana yeah, because you drew these cards. Damn. Yeah, those cards were nuts. So my my <laughs> first mox was a mox pearl. I carried it in my wallet. I loved it so much. I carried it everywhere with me at all times. I sold it again as part of the go to college fund for $90. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss. Want to guess what a mox pearl is worth? Oh, no. Is it more or less like 3.5? 3.5. An unlimited Mox Pearl right now sells for 2100 That's That's actually insane, though, for a piece of cardboard. Yeah, for 90 bucks, I, I feel great about it. I have no card. I used to have, like, Pokemon cards, and then my mom gave all my Pokemon cards away. And some of them were, were worth a lot of money. And I'm salty about that. <laughs> the art on this card. All right. Word of command. Too black. Whoa, this one looks weird because it has like a looks like a scroll you're reading the text off of rather than just like a white background. Uh, you may look at your opponent's hand and choose any card opponent can legally play using mana from his or her mana pool or lands. Opponent must play this card immediately. You make all the decisions it calls for. This spell may not be countered after you looked at your opponent's hand. Holy shit. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. That is insanely good. Man, so you tell me there's four cards left and there's only one more powerful nine. This is a card that I would highly consider being in. That that is nuts because your opponent literally has to be like basically if they don't counter it right there like this card can win you the game on the spot because you just potentially take their win condition away from them or whatever because you control it dude that's so nuts and you spend all of their mana like you tap their mana they get their mana back but that means they can't counter you anymore if they have something to like deal with your board or something mm -hmm. that has to be insane that's a really good card i'm more thinking about if it's in the powerful nine i feel like you wouldn't show me it immediately showing me after all the other ones like that's the mind game here so i think the card's very good Good, but I don't think it's the powerful nine. Uh, you are correct. It is not in the powerful nine. It is also, it's a very interesting card because the way that it works is you can do something busted. Like you can cast your opponent's ancestral recall and target you instead of themselves. So you draw three cards, they don't. Like that is insane, right? Ooh, yeah, but yeah. how would you do that? You would have to cast this at a time when they're tapped out, don't even have one blue mana with this card, like, you know, available to you and they can't cast an ancestral recall call that's really unlikely the other thing to keep in mind about this card is like if they have a board wipe in their hand and you make them cast it like they still cast it your stuff is still gone if you don't make them cast it they'll still cast it later like it still wipes he the board sure but like yeah. You can look at their hand be like, oh, they have a board clear so yeah. that you can play around it a little bit more. I just think like a card that literally says, for instance, there's a Hearthstone card in the game called Dirty Rat. That card pulls a random minion from your opponent's hand, but it doesn't trigger its battle cry. That card wins you the game on the spot if you get the right card. Ooh, this is almost yeah. the same idea, almost the exact same idea. But this card's arguably better because you get to look at their whole hand and you don't have to get a minion. You can do anything. Maybe I'm wrong, but what if they, if you play, if they play the minion, do you not get to decide whether or not it attacks or not? Because uh, if you're, no, if you're you making, don't. No, you, you oh. make, no, you don't. You're just deciding oh. play or don't play and how to tap mana for it. I should have clarified that before I answered this, before I uh, decided how good this card is, because I thought if you played the minion, you could just let it sit there and do nothing based, based on what it, because the card says you make all the decision it calls for. Yeah, that is that means only only in the casting of it. How much would you pay to give someone the word of command? <laughs> uh, uh, 150. 150? Yeah. This one's uh, $331. Close, close. I, I, It's a black card. Black cards, they, right. they get a bump, man. They, they yeah, get this little right. emo, emo bump. Another time one. Time twister. Don't tell me you pull up the, the, the game twister. Uh, Two neutral, one blue. Set time twister. I hate that it's like one word. Set time twister aside in a new graveyard pile. <laughs> what? Shuffle your hand, library, and graveyard together and into a new library and draw a new hand of seven cards. Leaving all cards in play where they are, opponent must do the same. Oh, 
So this is okay. There's a card in Larkana that is five mana. Both players discard their hand and they have to draw the seven cards. That card is actually pretty good. Uh, this is kind of the same concept, but it's interesting that you get the graveyard back into your deck. If you're behind, it's bad. But if your opponent is drawing towards a combo, you can really mess with their whole deck. And then they're kind of in this weird spot of like, they have to redo everything to get to the position they were at. Because I, I'm not sure how it is in Magic, but in Hearthstone, like combo pieces are not played at all until you get the full combo. Yeah, you set so, it up in your hand. Yeah, you set up in your hand. So th this card's like, no, you have to start from the beginning, but also like we have a board already developed. I don't think it's that good. I also don't think it's in the powerful mind. It doesn't scream to me this is broken. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna go. It was probably played, but I don't think it was like insane. Right match it would be good all right this card is in the power nine it is the last piece of the power nine no way dude. it is okay. definitely the most controversial uh because people do feel it's not on the realm of the others but the thing that you have to kind of envision with time twister is say that you are against somebody else playing a super high power deck full of power nine cards say you go turn one uh i'm gonna play my mox and my black lotus and my land and i'm gonna sacrifice my black lotus and uh maybe i play like one other piece or something and i'm gonna cast time twister and i'm gonna shuffle it back in and i'm gonna draw a brand new seven card the opponent hasn't taken a turn yet you are up three pieces of material and you have seven cards in hand and you may have just ruined the oh, opening I, hand they I kept. see i see i see yeah I, okay when you put it like that uh it does make sense why this card would be good so maybe by playing because like, i don't know if they reprinted this maybe they did uh oh uh they cannot reprint not reprinted but let me tell Tell you something like, about this. Oh, okay. um, so on Magic Arena, they don't have the Power Nine per se. You can't like go craft the Power Nine and play it in a format. But they created a card in their Alchemy format called Oracle of the Alpha. This is a two-three creature for three, and when you play it, you conjure, you create the Power Nine and shuffle them into your deck. So now, like you play this like very generic bird. And then now you have the power nine in your deck. And what was really cool about it is a lot of people who never played with these cards got to do it. And yeah, you would get in these situations where it's like, well, I guess I lose. This is an unwinnable position. And you top deck time twister. And you're like, okay, that does something. And you cast it. And now you have seven new cards. And then you're like, oh, wait. This one draws more cards. This one kills the thing. And then you draw another time twister and you're like, oh, <laughs> I do that. And it, it's like, and and you just have these turns where you like, your mind is blown. Like, how did Wait, I come back and win that game? I, I just had a realization. Maybe I'm not understanding this, but if you cast time twister, does that go back into your new library? It goes in a new graveyard. Uh, what I'm kind of oh, talking right, right, about. Right, right. No, you're right about that. Oracle of the alpha though. Like you can blink it or you can play four of them in your deck and each one makes another set of power. Oh, nine. Okay. So that's yeah, how yeah, yeah. in alchemy okay. you end up taking turns where you time twister seven times I see, until you win. I see. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> when you said that, I was like, on the card it says new library like new grave nah, you're right you're right maybe yeah i, I think Vidir is safe if it's the worst one but it's not actually, if it's not banned it'd be probably even more to be honest because it's collectible and you can play with it that's got to be like a, that's really rare it seems like right let's go 20. we'll go 20. Seven thousand. ah <laughs> <laughs> but i love the optimism let's go <laughs> i i bet there's been a time twister sold for that price to be honest like a, a mint one i bet there is arson should uh take some of these effects i wonder how they what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> this is a horror movie cover right here cyclopean two uh so this is a mono artifact two so two mana turn any one non-swamp land into a swamp during upkeep uh okay so just so i'm clear swamp is black or is it like that's a specific what, 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 like what is a non-swamp land into a swamp land just so i under understand fully a non-swamp land is a land that's not a swamp oh okay <laughs> and a oh. swamp is specifically a land that taps for black mana hey, therefore i remembered that let's yep. go yep okay. by transforming it uh, you make it from what it was into only a land that taps for black mana. Turn any. Oh, wait a minute. But you could do your opponents. Because <gasps> it's any. Ooh. 
Ooh, okay. Mark these changed lands with tokens. If Flipping Tomb is destroyed, remove one token of your choice, each upkeep, returning that land. That is actually a really, really cool card. Um, well, it's not in the powerful nine. I low key think this card's better than the last one, if I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, that is a very, very good effect. Um, especially if someone has to build up mana for some kind of combo effect, this could be really strong. You absolutely need to kill this as soon as possible. So, like, I think this actually is a really good card. It's like reverse mana cheat. I agree that this is a very good card. I can't speak to how much play it saw because it just not many got made and I wasn't, I never saw it like played. This is another one I've never seen on the battlefield, but I look at yeah. it like that card is mean. Like yeah, I that's do not uh, want to play against that card. So I'm not a, like, a, neither of, I don't know if you've actually ever designed for a card or uh, for a card game before. Um, but one of the things that I think makes a bad card or like a bad play experience, I should say, is taking away something that you have played. Like you, in order to play the game, you need to have mana. So this is a card that is on the line of being very toxic. Oh, I can promise line. you magic players hate having their lands destroyed. Hate. Oh, it's the, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. You want to make people mad? Go do some land destruction. Well, yeah. So it's it, again, harsh on the records that, uh, I'm trying to think of it. There's a card that like put both players mana crystals to six or five i can't remember and that card didn't see a ton of play but when it was played against you you were pretty fucking pissed yeah but yeah. we get mana every single turn i don't have to draw a land dude you have to draw a land yep <laughs> is it banned it is Commander? not it is legal <laughs> oh interesting I mean, it's not so rude though, because if like you just target the same person over and over it again, it's very rude. And in Commander, you have to think <laughs> about how much mana do you need to. Oh, it's also a mono artifact, so you can only use it on one land per turn. It doesn't say yes. it, but you have to tap it. So only one land per turn you can do this to. And when you think about having like three opponents, like how much does yeah. that matter to hurt well, one it's, land? It's it's bad against three people, but yeah. if you really wanted to say fuck you to someone in particular, yeah, like you could do like I'm, I, again, I've never played commander personally, and I'm sure the, per the person on the table hates your guts after you do this. But like you work with someone else to both play this card and you only target that one person like <laughs> they're never playing commander with you ever again. Yeah, that that's the whole point. Just piss off your friends. Uh, it's not banned. 600. 133. <laughs> If it were better in Commander, I, I think if it were a legitimate, like, if it actually hurt everybody's lands or you could do it multiple times a turn, I think it would be worth a lot more. Yeah, fair enough. Consecrate land. All enchantments on target, oh, sorry, this is one white. All enchantments on target land are destroyed. Land cannot be destroyed or further enchanted until consecrate land has been destroyed. Um, hmm. I mean, I, dude, it's so, this one's so specific. It's so specific. Like, I, I sure, in, in the right circumstance, this card's good, right? But, Let me show you another card that was never reprinted okay. after uh, alpha, because that's fun too. Just to give you the other side of the context. Okay. I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, hold on. Destroy any one land? That's an enchantment? No, that's black black for a sorcery. Oh, wait, what the fuck? So it Oh, I get it. I get it. Wait, so you can play this and then you just destroy one of their lands. You say fuck you. Yeah, for two mana. It's totally and, fine. And that if works with they never play the game. No, read the consecrate land. Lands cannot land cannot be yeah. destroyed. So, like, you know, protect your land. Oh. Here, I'll show you. I, the, trust me, the hits just keep on coming with cards they Wait. never printed again that are land related. Here's a green one. Destroy any one land? Ice Storm, three mana, destroy a land. Wait, so they just said literally fuck you to the mana system. Oh, hold on, set. hold on. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, they invented this great <laughs> mana system and then they just screwed it up. Here, read Kudzu. When target land is tapped, it is destroyed. Okay, unless that was the last land in play. Sorry, it's so fucking hard to read these cards. <laughs> You're doing like. great. Uh, Kuta is not discarded. Instead, the player whose land is just destroyed may place it on another. Ew! So how does this make you feel about Consecrate Land? Okay, so uh -huh. it's, it's it's a much better card because you don't want your lands to be destroyed, right? That seems really important. So uh, I was probably good. I mean, if if this was what the win, like it, based on what you're describing, this was what one of the win conditions was back in the cloud, like the original set. So this card was good. It's actually nice they printed this card. Imagine this card wasn't here. Holy fuck. <laughs> this card, this game would be, this game would have never have taken off. So, uh, <laughs> this card's not good. <laughs> Oh, okay, so, so I, I I set it up. I set this all up for you to be like, if they had printed Consecrate Land again, what they would have done and made cards like it is one white your land like your lands cannot 
your lands cannot be targeted. This only protects one land. And you can't do much with one land. They'll just blow up all the other ones. So I oh, think yeah. I, that's why I want to share. I think it's actually funny that they put this in the set as like the solution. It only protects one land though. And you can't do anything with one land. So was white just bad? Yeah. Like, it was terrible. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because blue was, seems very good. Black was, seems very good. Red has Raging River, so it's insane. <laughs> uh, green was probably okay, because I ramped, I was assuming, back in the day. Yeah, Did a ramp? I yeah, yeah. It, it, I didn't show you any ramp cards, but the best creatures, honestly, in the format were like one mana tap for one man. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah that's that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, so then white side. Dude, that's it's so weird. What the the parallels between magic and Hearthstone are actually insane. In OG Hearthstone, Paladin wasn't very good. And that's Paladin's basically white for the most part. Uh but like Warlock was really good, which is black. Uh Warrior was Warrior was more control, so I don't know if it would be like red. Uh Druid was the best class in classic, which is green, because it could it had like ramp. Yeah. Consistent mana was very, very good. Uh Mage was really good in classic too, which is basically blue. All right. Well, those are the cards I wanted to show you. Uh what any uh, closing thoughts on just how far we've come from Alpha? And did you have any favorites? <laughs> Dude, I think the craziest thing about the entire thing is the way that text adapted to how much text is on the text box. That, that's the thing that blew my mind. Oh, wait. We're not done. What do you mean we're not done? We're not done. You Surprise? have to tell me how much money you would spend to consecrate oh, a land. Uh, it's your $1. last chance to nail one. One dollar. One dollar? Yeah. One dollar. Can I find yeah. a listing of this for one dollar? Oh, my God. <laughs> is it? TCG player has one today that I could purchase for a dollar and 39 cents. I'm taking it. Let's <laughs> fucking go, dude. <laughs> Nailed it.